Welcome back. This video is going to show you how to construct decompositions. So as a review, um, what I'm showing on the screen right now is a decomposition. And we get that with the decompose function in R. Uh, you can plot it, or if you want, you could do an auto plot of the same object and you get a uh, ggplot version of this. Um, and so what exactly is this decomposition? Well, um, it's going to take the original data. So here's the original Amazon sales data. And I selected a small window because I want to be able to do this by hand. Um, and then what's going to happen is we want to, uh, to decompose this into its component, component parts. And so the component parts consist of what are the seasonal effects and so we see a regular season here where every fourth period uh, sales go very high. The other three periods are quite low. Um, and then another piece is what I've been calling the cycle trend. The textbook also calls it that, which is um, anything that's not, uh, you know, on this periodic. So the seasonal part is the periodic part. Um, the trend is something that... Uh, is systematic but not regular. So it could be the cyclical part where maybe the thing goes up for a while then down for a while. We don't really see that with this short of a time series, but that's uh, often present, as well as a true trend, which we, uh, we see in a very strong way here where their sales are systematically increasing over time. Okay, so we take the original data and if we, um, if we, if we combine the seasonal part with the trend part, and then the last part is the remainder or the random part, we, uh, we get the original data back. So how do we actually do this? That's, that's the point of this video. So the methods that are used to do this are very old. They, um, I believe, go back to um, you know, roughly 100 years, some of the first methods that were used. And so I'm going to talk about the basic multiplicative uh, uh, method of decomposition there's a similar method for additive decompositions that I'm not going to cover in as much detail. So what is the, um, uh, the multiplicative decomposition? We're going to assume that the observed data is just the trend or the cycle trend times the seasonal part times wh whatever's left. Okay, so how do I pull out these three parts from my data? Well, the idea is this, we're going to first estimate the cycle trend using a moving average of order M. So M is going to be the seasonal period. For example, with the Amazon data, we had a seasonal period of four because uh, every four periods, uh, we, we, we see the pattern repeating itself. All right, now it's very important that you do it of order M. Um, so in my previous video, I mentioned that if you don't have your moving average matching up with the, um, the, the seasonal period, you could get very weird effects. So in this case, if I, had, if I used a moving average of, of three, what, what you would find is that you know, these three points would get averaged for the first value, and then we get the spike, and the point would jump up. And then that point would be in the next two moving averages, and then the third moving average would drop again. So it's like we're capturing some of that seasonality and we don't want to do that. We want to just pull out the trend part. Right? So that's why we're using a moving average of order four in this case, because that is the uh, seasonal period. Really important. Okay, once we've done that, we're going to create something called a detrended series. So if I divide my uh, my y value by the t, so y over t, you can think of that as being composed of the seasonal part as well as the random part. So divide by t, y over t is just the seasonal part and the random part. Okay, so cool. We've, we've kind of isolated the seasonal part, but we've got noise mixed into that. So how do I do that? Well, I'm going to compute the simple average of my, uh, of my detrended data. So this is called detrended data, what, what I produce in step two. 
and uh, then I'm simply going to average all my, uh, uh, you know, my, my values by season to give what are known as seasonal indices. So that's just saying how much higher or lower is the uh, time series during a given season. All right, that gives me the seasonal index. So now I've got the seasonal part. I've got the, um, the trend part. If I divide my, uh, my detrended series by the seasonal part, so take y sub t, divide by these two pieces, I'm left with the remainder. So that's, that's all there is to it. And so when we were looking at this uh, trend, this is decomposition, we have the trend part, that's the detrended part from step uh, two. Uh, the seasonal part is gonna come from step three, and then the remainder comes from step four. All right, so let's go do this by hand um, in R. So first off, um, rather than using the entire series, which is maybe more realistic, um, let's just take a couple uh, uh, years here. So you see I've just taken the first four years to keep this manageable for a tiny example. Um, once we've mastered it for a tiny example, we can take it out to the full you know, 20, 30 year period, uh, you know, uh, window that we have for the entire data set. But let's just keep our life manageable. So if I do this, uh, this call to fit, as I showed in R, um, the fitted object has these components. So it's a, it's a, it's a list. Um, X gives us the original data. Okay, so when we look at this plot, this is fit dollar X. That is the original data that I passed to it. Well, let's move through this kind of the way I've described the algorithm. So I'm gonna skip seasonal and go over to the trend part. And so what is in the trend part uh, is if I were to plot this fit dollar trend, I'm gonna get this line. So um, let's just see what happens if I do an auto plot on fit dollar trend. What you'll see is that uh, I should just get that, that trend part. And so that's where that's coming from. Then um, what is um, fit dollar figure? So you're gonna see figure is, it's not exactly next. Um, the, the fit dollar figure is giving us the seasonal indices. So the fit dollar figure is gonna have length however uh, long your seasonal period is. So here we have a period of four since it's quarterly data, therefore there are four figures. The interpretation of these is very important. And so what, uh, what this says is our sales go up by 34% in the, in the fourth quarter over the cycle trend. And so why is that? Well, remember, we're taking this seasonal effect times the cycle trend. And so our fitted value is gonna be whatever the cycle trend is, but if it's fourth quarter, we're gonna increase it by about 34%. What you'll also see is that my, uh, my sales in the other three quarters get decreased from the cycle trend. So you know, first quarter is actually almost equal to the cycle trend. That value is very close to one, 98% is close to one. Uh, seasons two and three though are substantially below. And so when we go look at um, what we're seeing, let's, let's go back to our uh, auto plot of this. That's exactly what we're seeing. This, uh, this seasonal effect for the first quarter is about right on the value one. Then our sales drop in the next two quarters and we get that big bump in, in, in fourth quarter. Then the thing just repeats itself over and over again. So it's like our, our sales increase, and you, you can see that the amplitude of these effects is actually growing, but the multiplicative effect cancels that. And it just says your sales are always about 34% higher in the fourth quarter than they were in, in uh, the, the cycle trend estimate, which is roughly what's in the first quarter here. All right, moving on. What is in the seasonal part? Well, we just uh, repeat this figure part four times. And so that is gonna be the seasonal 
um, index for each period um, as, as we go, uh, go along. So, so the seasonal part has the same length as the data that we use to estimate the data. The figure part has the length of the um, seasonal period. So four versus, in this case, 16. Finally, the random part is everything that's left. So um, the one last part of this that I, I haven't shown you is the type. The type is multiplicative. It's not an additive one. Now, what I said earlier was we can recover the original uh, observed data simply by multiplying the, the cycle trend by the seasonal part by the um, by the what, what's, what's left over, the remainder. And so let's just go try that. So if I take the trend times the seasonal times the random part, notice what I have is the original data, except we can't do it for the two endpoints because the moving average doesn't give us those estimates. So that's a small problem with this classical decomposition method. This, this gets fixed with some of the more modern decomposition methods. But um, you're going to see we've recovered the original data exactly. All right, so you, uh, those of you who've taken my classes before know I love to do these things by hand. So I'll use the moving average function. If I apply the moving average function to my original data, and I'm going to use a moving average of order four, since I've got quarterly data, notice I've recovered here exactly the cycle trend. So that matches exactly this. And so just as a review, that's showing me this, this trend part. What's happening here is I'm taking, for, for this point, uh, I'm giving full weight to the, the points, the one point next to it, half weight to those two away. And so I can't make an estimate. I, I need two points to the left of an observation, and that's why I can't form estimates of these two values. Likewise, I can't do it on the other end for the last two values. All right, so that's what the moving average part is doing. Now, remember the next step. So, so th this was step two if you're keeping track. So step two was uh, estimate the detrended, the, 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 sorry, that was step one, that's the cycle trend part. Um, now we have to compute the detrended series and then the seasonal indices. I think this is really easy to do with some dplyr. So I can compute my detrended data simply by dividing y by that moving average. Uh, at the same time, let's just get a hold of what, what quarter this is. So this quarter is going to return the value 1, 2, 3, or 4. It's going to assign that. Uh, it's just going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we've covered the cycle part for um, Dplyr is not going to compute means if there are missing values, so let's filter those away. So I'm using the dplyr filter here. We'll group by, group by the quarter variable, and then I'm just going to compute the means of the detrended data. So that's got, almost going to give me my seasonal indices. But there is one small adjustment that we need to make. So this, the small adjustment is that the values of the seasonal indices have to sum to uh, four in this case. And, and they, there's no reason why they have to sum to four, uh, given the way I've estimated them. So all I'm going to do to make sure they sum to four is we'll add them up. And we'll take 4 divided by that sum, and that'll be the adjustment factor. So I'm going to take s hat as just s hat times 4 divided by uh, the sum of the values. So now these things are going to sum to 4, and they should look very familiar. So this is going to be the fourth quarter effect that we saw up in the figure command, saying our sales go up by 34% over the cycle trend in fourth quarter. Here was 98% that we saw up here, and then uh, our sales are substantially lower uh, in, in periods two and three. So the way to think about this is whatever the cycle trend, so, so that detrended data 
go about 84% of that, and that's what your sales will be in, in quarter two. Uh, likewise, go about 84% of it in, in quarter three. Increase it by 34% to get what's happening in period four. Okay, so every textbook tends to do this in Excel. And so let's, let's do that together. So let's first begin by estimating the moving average, which is going to be our estimate of the cycle trend. I call that, this is T hat sub T. So remember how we do this. We're going to take half of this value, so half of the value that's two prior to it, plus all of this value, plus all of this value, plus all of this value, plus only half of this value. And then we're going to divide by 4. And so 1.37 is that moving average. And so you'll see that's exactly what we got here, 1.3717. And I can copy this down. OK, next step is we're going to compute the detrended data. So what is the detrended data? Take y divided by that moving average. And so if I take my y sub i divided by the moving average, we get the detrended data. So then the next step would be to compute the values of these by quarter, which you could do with a pivot table. You'd have to compute the adjustment then, and you'd have the seasonal indices that we computed uh, back here with R. Uh, I think the dplyr is way easier than using the pivot table. Uh, and then we could finally compute the remainders. So that's how we would do it in Excel. 